If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and the corporations which grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is now controlled by a system of credit. We are no longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. Woodrow Wilson. The gentleman from Ohio. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Request permission to address the House, revise and extend. Without objection. The $700 billion bailout for Wall Street is being driven by fear, not fact. This is too much money in too short a time going to too few people while too many questions remain unanswered. Why aren't we having hearings on the plan we just received? Why aren't we questioning the underlying premise of the need for a bailout with taxpayers' money? Why have we not even considered any alternatives other than to give $700 billion to Wall Street? Why aren't we asking Wall Street to clean up its own mess? Why aren't we passing new laws to stop the speculation which triggered this? Why aren't we putting up new regulatory structures to protect the investors? How do we even value the $700 billion in toxic assets? Why aren't we directly helping homeowners with their debt burden? Why aren't we helping American families faced with bankruptcy? Why aren't we reducing debts for Main Street instead of Wall Street? Isn't it time for fundamental change in our debt-based monetary system so we can free ourselves from the manipulation of the federal re by the Federal Reserve and the banks? Is this the United States Congress or the Board of Directors of Goldman Sachs? Wall Street is a place of bears and bulls. It's not smart to force taxpayers to dance with bears or to follow closely behind the bulls. Why are we in debt? We borrow trillions for wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, trillions for tax cuts for the rich. We borrow billions from China and Japan. We have plenty of money for war, Wall Street, and welfare for the wealthy. But when millions of honest Americans need, jo need jobs, need wage increases, need health care, need education, need retirement security, they're told, no, we don't have the money. How is it that the Fed can create trillions of dollars to give to the banks, but the U.S. can't meet its needs whenever, uh, without going into debt to banks? The financial system works for a few at the expense of the many. The founders did not intend for America to be run by big banks and Wall Street. The Constitution put the ability to create money in the hands of Congress. The Fed took away that power in 1913. We need to get that power back to invest in our economy, to create jobs, to put America back to work, to rebuild America without going into debt. We must reclaim our destiny by reclaiming control over the money system. The gentleman's time has expired. You'll back. And expressed about the collapsing of this housing bubble. It's a shame that we had not talked about this 10 or 15 years ago when many free market economists predicted it would come and worried about it and wished we could have prevented it. But the irony of all this now is that everything that caused the, fi the financial bubble, the housing bubble, uh, we're resorting to doing the same thing. You can't solve the problem of inflation with inflation. The debasement of the currency, which is a continual process, is the reason we get financial problems and financial bubbles. Whether it was in the 1920s or the NASDAQ bubble or the housing bubble, we have to deal with the cause. We're dealing and we talk so much about our solutions, but nobody's talking about the cause. And the cause literally is the excessive credit created by the Federal Reserve System, and we can't deny this. And then we add fuel to the fire by credit allocation. We come in with uh, the CRA. How confident CRA. are you in Ben Bernanke's decision? And with that decision, are we running out of options to jumpstart the economy? What is the uh, proper relationship? What should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, uh, uh, I don't think it's good policy for the president or a president-elect to second-guess the Fed. Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency. Which is an independent body. Is an independent agency. Which is an independent body. Is an independent agency. Which is an independent body. And that means basically that uh, there is no other agency of government which can overrule 
actions that we take. I don't think it's good policy for the president or a president-elect to second-guess the Fed. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Don't frankly matter. And uh, I've had uh, very good relationships with Dude. presidents. We're in a lot of trouble because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now because less than 3% of you people read books. Because less than 15% of you read newspapers. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. And when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be fed for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. Congress and mainstream media have blamed our financial crisis on the recent administration or poor decisions made on Wall Street. This crisis, however, is not about politics. The Republican and Democratic parties are both corrupt. The crisis was created by the real power that controls our country through these two parties, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is a private bank whose owners are primarily European. It is not federal and there's no reserve. Yet we give them our tax dollars and let them set our rules for our government. The Federal Reserve prints our money for a fee, lends us the money we paid them to print, charges us interest on the loan, and then sends our money overseas. We've never audited the Federal Reserve or our gold, which they also control. This privately owned bank has created this crisis and previous ones by lending in excess to flood the economy with money and then pulling cash out of the market to create a crisis. This is a calculated move to keep the American government borrowing more money so the American taxpayers are always in debt. And these private bankers can keep increasing their wealth and power exponentially. We can take back control of our own government from these private bankers. They don't think that we, the lowly workers and taxpayers, are intelligent enough to understand their tactics. I believe they're mistaken. For more information on the history of the Federal Reserve Bank, please go to themoneymasters.com or www.LibertyForLife.com. For a list of senators and congressmen who represent you, go to CampaignForLiberty.com and click States on the main menu. Contact your representative and senators today and let them know it is time to end the Federal Reserve stranglehold on our economic future.